Ahoy! So the focus of this first prototype is the song slider. When I press that button, it should rewind and start following the position of the song slowly, and then let me drag to wherever I want it to be. So here we go. A year or two ago, a friend of mine sent me these pictures of what a physical Winamp might look like, and both of us went, want. I decided to finally get off my ass and, ta-da. I'm going to start simple and get more and more technical as we go, so you can drop out whenever it suits you, there's no mid credit scene, you won't be missing anything. So let's start with the surface level version. There's a Raspberry Pi off screen that plays the actual music. It constantly tells this Arduino the current song position, and the Arduino uses the motor on this slider to actually position it where it should be. Then if you touch the slider, the Arduino tells the Raspberry Pi, which then pauses the playback, and then the Raspberry Pi listens for the new position for where the song should be playing from. Okay, so this slider is actually part of a motorized linear potentiometer. It's basically a variable resistor that is 0 ohms there, 50,000 ohms in the middle, and 100,000 ohms at the end. So this potentiometer actually has a tiny belt which is connected to the slider and can be driven by a small DC motor. And with these two things you can create a feedback loop to be able to both weed where the slider is and to be able to move it to a specific location. Normally I would have used a bunch of relays to control the direction of the motor, but I saw a wonderful video about how to control a DC motor using a L293D IC, that little buddy over there, and thought, hey, maybe even a monkey like me could do that. So I made a tiny Arduino sketch to read where the slider was and simply move the motor in the direction it needed to go in order to move the slider to where it had to be. And that worked very well as is. Huzzah! Next, I needed to make the Arduino stop trying to set the position of the slider when I was, to avoid a tug of war. Looking up how capacitive touch sensor stuff works, most tutorials go, slam a 10 mega ohm resistor in place and just use the capacitive sensor library. I didn't have a 10 mega ohm resistor, so I just chained a bunch of really high value ones until I got kind of close. I ran the Arduino scratch, and huzzah part 2, adding one single line meant I could now detect when I was touching the slider. So I put the fancy new motor stuff and the fancy capacitive touch sensor stuff together, and... The power of Christ compels you! The, the power of Christ compels you! Like, comedy, timing, is everything. What most capacitive touch tutorials don't explicitly mention is that you're measuring change over time. So looking at that earlier call with the capacitive sensor library, You'll notice the parameter of 10, that's how many samples to take because you need to measure the change. That means it sits in a loop for however many iterations you've requested before returning to your code. So my code looked something like this. Check if we're touching, read where the slider is supposed to be, check where the potentiometer is, start the motor in the direction that it needs to go to get there, and then go back and loop. So I check the touch, I read the desired position, I see that we need to move forwards along the position timeline, and I start the motor forwards. The next loop, I check the touch, but this takes so long that by the time I get to read where the slider is, the motor has already driven it beyond where it should be. So it changes the direction of the motor, and loops all the way back again. Do this in a loop, and wee woo wee woo wee woo. So what I decided to do was to change how the capacitive sensor library does this reading changing the function so it reads a single value and then returns not done so that the rest of the loop continues as expected. This continues until the loop is executed, in this case, 10 times, at which point the read function has gathered its 10 samples, has determined if a touch happened, and then returns true if so, resetting the internals regardless. And this seemed to work all right for now. So, it's working, as in it's not catching fire and it does the bare minimum poorly. 
Now, obviously this is very, very, very first steps in doing this. Um, I've done buttons and things before, so those were no brainers, but I'd never done something like this before. So that was, uh, and using an IC, which was, you know, big boy stuff for me. I don't like how jerky the movement of the slider is when it's actually moving under its own uh, power, it does little bits. Now, the whole reason why is because it's reading the position isn't incredibly accurate in the first place. So there's a good enough factor for positioning the slider because you don't, you can't get exactly certain ohms. So if you try to set that exact location, it, it starts twitching as it goes along because it can never get the exact location. So you kind of set a, a tolerance factor. So next, I'd either do some sort of PID thing to tune it better, or maybe just get a motor with an encoder. I'm not sure. As for the screens on here, I'd ideally like to have one large screen and then just have an overlay with like cutouts. But I mean, the components are pretty deep, so I'd have to cut the screen up. So I may end up having to use a bunch of tiny ones. But yeah, for now, I mean, that was the part that was scaring me. Screens, buttons I've done before. So yeah, here's hoping smooth sailing from here. Thanks for watching. Stay safe and bye.